welcome to our morning joy devotion. Anybody still holding on? Anybody still fighting this morning? Just letting the other ones know we are on morning joy devotion this morning. But come hop on. Set your alarms. How many of us do we set our alarms to hop on our morning joy devotion? Amen. Good morning. Let's just listen to this for one quick minute and then we'll get started. Because I speak to quite a few of us. Hmm. And I hear the stories. And I know some of us, we be pressing through some stuff. Amen. It's one thing to go through some stuff. It's another thing to say, I'm still holding on to this hand. I'm still fighting. I'm still pushing. I'm still believing. Amen. Tell that enemy, you are a defeated foe. No matter what it is I'm going through, I am still going to smile. I am still going to trust in God. I am still holding on. Such a beautiful song, Miss Joy. Such a beautiful song. Amen, amen. Good morning. Never letting go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to our morning joy devotion. My name is Clarissa Young. I, I am not your host for today. Miss Joyce is our host for today. And before we get started, I want to tell you thank you, Miss Joyce. Thank you. Uh, oh, always thank you, but special thank you on today. Uh, many of you know that's inside of our group, that's close to me inside of our group, that my baby had surgery on yesterday. And y'all know that um, I am very much a mama's bear, very much a, a, a family lady, and I'm very much a, a fap sister. And so trying to, to juggle so much, but let me also tell you, my Travion, my coach Travion, my Tyler, he's my right hand, right? He's my right hand. So not only, you know, Y'all know how it is when, you're, when your right hand is down. So now you on extra duty, right? You're on extra duty. And so, Miss Joyce, for you to step in um, and say, Rissa, take care of family because I got you. You know, the surgery went very much well, very much well. He is in a healing process. He is out of school um, until we return back from after Thanksgiving. Um, he's pretty much down, pretty much down. We all made pellets and air mattresses down here in the front room so he can sleep on the pallet, not on the pallet, on the recliner chair. 
Um, and so we're now in the healing processes. So thank you so much for all your prayers and your blessings and, and so forth. Amen. But now it's the healing, the healing part, which he's a fighter like mama. And so but I don't want him to have to, to fight what he doesn't have to fight. And so I want him to be able to rest, which is what Rissa needs to know how to do. So I thank you, Miss Joyce, for giving me the opportunity to rest and focus on family. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Right now, I want you to buck your seatbelts because I'm sure the Holy Ghost is going to come on this line today. You see this? I did my homework and I was going to do stuff with him. He said, throw that paper away. It's in the chair. He says, what you need, I got it. The Hack Bible. Ephesians. Where are we this morning? Ephesians. Before I pray, I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I've been praising him all morning. Because he's been speaking to me all week. He spoke to me through Miss Vicky twice. He said, faithful and believe. He spoke to me this morning when I was sitting there looking at these papers. I only looked in the, the Bible 10 minutes ago. He says, I got it. So I don't know what he's going to come out with. He said, throw these papers away. He says, sing songs to me. He spoke to me and said, Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Then I was listening to Miss Vicky, and he had already spoken to me the song, Everything is Gonna Be All Right. Whatever we're going through, everything's gonna be all right. Yeah, it's gonna be all right. And he has a way of confirming stuff. April was singing, I'm still holding on. That song was in my heart. The same thing happened with Clarissa. Sometimes we have the same song. So we are all his children. So he speaks to you, but he's speaking to the main person who's gonna bring you the message. Yes, that's what I want you to do. I'm telling you, this is confirmation. He said, be faithful and believe me and trust me. He's Lord, he's our Lord. Father God, we come to you this morning and we just thank you for being Lord. We thank you that you sometimes just have to whip us because we want to fix everything and we want to do everything. And we be in a tipsy when we have a sign to do something. We look at a top and we go on the computer and we just start looking to see how we can do it. First of all, we have to pray and ask you to open our hearts and our minds because you pour in the wisdom that you want to come forth in your message. So, Father, I thank you, and I also ask that you forgive me, because sometimes I forget to pray to you before I get an assignment. So, Father, forgive me for that. I try to always remember to come to you first, but sometimes life gets so busy, and then we just jump into your steady period without praying. So, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for anything, but not putting you first all the time, because you are so important. We are nothing without you. So right now, I ask you, Lord, to clear everybody's mind that's on this Zoom right now. Just clear it. Remove anything that they got going on in their lives. Anything that Satan is throwing and just popping up and it's just tearing them apart. And let us just feel your holy presence. Feel your peace. Feel your comforting hands. Feel your warm presence. Feel the light in our presence just magnifying sevenfold times that it gets so bright that we know that we are in your presence. And so, Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we're still in our book, The Awakening, and we're on page 358, actually 355. And the title of the lesson is The Summit and Beyond. And I was having trouble with that. That's why he told me, leave it alone. I got it. I got it. 
the summit and beyond, beyond, the summit and beyond. We're going up on the mountain this morning. We're going up on the mountain. That's where he is. We're going so far up on the mountain that we're going to be like Moses when he went up on the mountain of Horeb to the burning bush. He was on holy ground. We're going up to the mountain on holy ground. And we're going to stand up on the top. Just like that picture I sent to Clarissa yesterday with the sun. We're going to feel that sun beaming down on it. And that sun represents him. We're going to stand with our arms open wide in his presence. And we're going to look beyond. When you're on the top of the mountain, you can look so far beyond everything. It looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. We're going to the mountaintop this morning. And the first scripture says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think according to the what power that works with where in us to him be what glory in the church who is the church we are not the building we are and in Christ Jesus to all generations, he's not just talking to the Israelites back in that day or the Gentiles back in this day because this is the New Testament. All generations. So who are we? We are included because we are Abraham's what? Seed. For how long? Forever. And ever and ever. Amen. You got it? I don't care what nobody says. Jesus came to what? Pay the price for us. And by doing that, if we go into our, those that have the Bible, I know Clarissa had it. If you go into Ephesians, and it's on 1427, page 1427, it talks about meditating on our spiritual blessings in Christ. And that's what this is talking about, our blessings, because sometimes we forget what kind of blessings we have in Christ, right? In Christ, what? You were chosen to be a holy and to be blameless. In Christ, we were adopted as sons and daughters. Because if you go back in the Old Testament, God brought out his children, which were the Jews, which were the Israelites. Gentiles weren't in that then. But Jesus came for us so that we could be adopted as Gentiles. Think about that, we adopted. So we got all the rights. Because God is our what? Father. So when we've been adopted, we got all the rights, which is good because we have been adopted as sons and daughter in God's family. In Christ, you and I are blessed by the glorious grace of who? God. In Christ, we have been redeemed. Our sins have been forgiven. I don't care what Satan throws at you. Your sins were forgiven when Jesus died on that cross. And when you accepted him, you became his child. 
All you got to do, you died on the cross with him. You died. And when he rose, you rose up into a new life. You just got to walk in the victory. The battle has already been won. Satan is just trying to mess with our heads. In Christ, we have been redeemed. Well, I'll repeat that again, redeemed from our sins and have been forgiven. In Christ, the mystery of God's will has been made known to us. If we what? Steady his word. You won't know nothing if you don't study. And that's the part that we have to get to. If we don't dig into the word, we would never know. So how can you do anything if you don't know the word? In Christ, all things will be united in the fullness of time. In Christ, we have an inheritance, one that's incorruptible. In Christ, we are able to worship and praise to his glory. There are some countries that can't worship and praise God because they will be killed. And here in America, we can praise him, go to church. Just think about our ancestors back in the day. They had to praise God at night and they had to make a code so that their masters wouldn't know what they were doing. That's how they became free. In Christ, we have been sealed with a promise of the Holy Spirit. And you know what a seal is? That's a stamp. You've been sealed. In Christ, we have the immeasurable power of greatness of God. He has given us the authority. It's up to us to tap into it and to use it. In Christ, we, <clears throat> we have been made alive, even though we once were dead in sin. In Christ, we have been put in the heavenly places with him. They said we live in two places, here on earth and in heaven. Think about that. Think about that. In Christ, we will find the immeasurable riches of God's grace and kindness. In Christ, we are created for good works. In Christ, we have been brought near by the blood of Jesus though we once was far away. In Christ, we will find reconciliation, breaking down the walls of hostility. So I don't care what people are trying to tell you, we can break it down. Just call on Jehovah Saba, your warrior. Call on Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Call on Jehovah Shalom, your peace. Call on the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't care what I don't have. He's my shepherd, he sees me, I'm his child. This is only a smoke screen, only a test. Yes, it might be rough for a little while, but if I keep my eyes on Christ, if I keep my eyes on God, it's gonna be all right. In Christ, we have been created as a new man or a new woman. The old things have passed away. All that filthy stuff we used to do, all that stuff we used to say, we are new now. We don't hang around the old folks. We got a new life. In Christ, we have access to the Father. We don't have a, to have a priest to sacrifice animals. We don't have to have a priest to have to go behind the veil and plead our case. When Jesus Christ died, that veil was stripped and ripped in two. We can go to the Father, but it's up to you. And you got to know who the Father, 
And how do you know who the father is? You've got to have an intimate relationship with him. In Christ, we grow in holiness. In Christ, we can build into a dwelling place for God by the spirit. We can live, because he said he goes to what? Prepare a place for it. this world is not our home. He got us. But I want to ask you, do you have an intimate relationship with him? What is your character like? Yes, he saved you. Yes, you know him in your head, in your mind. But do you know him in your inner man? We all do physical exercise for this body. But I'm glad nobody has x-ray eyes and they can see what our spiritual man really looks like. Is he puny? Is he weak? Does he have muscles? Is he laying there on a pillow because he hasn't been fed? Is he hungry? Is he saying, Joyce, Clarissa, Michelle Lee, Ollie, Daphne, you're not feeding me, I'm dying. What does your spiritual man really look like inside? We're so concerned about the outer appearance. What's on the inside? What's on the inside? And then if we go over to the next page, which is 1429, it says the do not for a Christian living. I said, my God, my God, my God, you talking to us this morning. Lord have mercy. Then we'll get to this little lesson. I hope we will. We may not. He says, do not lie. That's the first thing it says. First of all, I'll read it. It says, many of God's commands are framed as positive statements. Love your neighbor. We know about that. But numerous commands also tell us what we shouldn't do. A prime example is the six do nots included in Paul's instruction for Christian living in Ephesians 4. And the first one is do not lie. Do not let anger cause you to sin. Mm. Number three, do not steal. And if the truth be, stole, be told, we all have stolen in our life. Nobody can say, because if you went to work and you bought pens and ink pens and pencils home, paper clips, and that's stealing. Hmm. He didn't say it was a big, a big steal or, you know, he didn't say what he said, do not steal. So we all had to repent for that. You know, you got to be honest. You got to be honest. You got to be honest. Do not engage in unholy talk. It says, as Christians, we must refuse to allow our speech to be obscene, vulgar, or profane. How many of us use those little four well other words? Be honest, we all have. Especially when you get angry. It's, okay. Anything? Okay, number five, do not obstruct the Holy Spirit. That's a bigot. The spirit is grieved when we obstruct his work in helping us to obey God. We've done that too. The Holy Spirit tell us to do something. We think we're big enough and we know what to do. You're obstructing God's direction in your life. I said this was going to be hot, and it's, it's, it's right, but it's tight this morning, as my pastor said. If it's stepping on your toes, 
It was meant to be. I guess I put this red shirt on for, for reasons. The Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus is what? Red. Six, do not hold on to emotions that cause you to be unloving. When we hold on to these emotions that cause us to sin, we should instead be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. And then the last one in Ephesians is on the next page. I told you he was getting us right in Ephesians. It says, how and why to say no. That's a biggie. We have trouble with that, don't we? He said, be direct. Don't beat around the bush. One of the most effective methods to be polite but direct. When I'm not sure, or I don't think I can do that, you leave ambiguity about whether you'll say yes at a later time. Simply say, because of prior commitments, I won't be able to do that. Make it nice, sweet. You catch more flies, with honey than you do vinegar. If you press, explain your commitment. And you know what's in the sixth chapter, the whole arm of God. So this morning we up on the summit, we up on that mountain. God just spoke to us. And he said to be intimate with him. So I can take this little paper to tell you, this one paper you said to use. How do you be intimate with God? Have you ever thought about that? And you know, people have misconceptions about being intimate with God, right? And I didn't know that. When I did this, I went, oh my God. People think about being intimate because they say intimacy is related to sex. They can't sort of relate to that. That's how. So I'll read that for you too. It says, number one, we need to genuinely repent. We got to do it genuinely. Truly desire the uh, appropriation of God's power because he's given us power, but we got to truly desire it. Discern if love is in your motivation. Renew and govern your mind. Reckon yourself dead to sin. Live by the spirit. So I haven't actually gotten to what we need to do yet. Those are some things you want you to do before. Now this misconception that I was telling you about, it said misconception number one. Intimacy is akin to sex. First in the world, that regularly defines intimacy as something sexual. It is difficult to concept, to phantom when it comes to God. God is spirit, however. So there is nothing sexual about having an intimate relationship with him. Isn't it just like the evil one to take the word that describes something vital and confuse us? It makes us discomfortable about relating to our God. Misconception number two, intimate should be easy. That's not true. Intimacy with God does take a lot of effort. You got to take time to get to know him. You got to take time in the word just like you would do with your husband. You just, when you get married and you meet someone, you don't become intimate with them right away. You got to learn that it takes a long time. It's the same way with God. Misconception number three. 
Intimacy shouldn't involve waiting. That, yes, it should involve waiting. Now we're gonna get, oh, and misconception number four, intimacy with God is only for special people? Uh-uh, it's for all of us. It's not for special people. So now let's talk about how you get intimate with God. Number one, decide to obey no matter what the cause or how difficult the journey. Whatever the cause or how difficult the journey. That means you need to forsake the world, believe in his goodness and obey him even when there is no evidence and embrace that he who loses his life for Jesus sake will find it. Number two, immerse yourself in the word. Follow the lead of Jesus and believe every word he says. Number three, spend copious time pursuing God. Be brutally honest with God. Ask the hard questions. Wait on him. Do everything he tells you to do and learn to believe his grace, love, transforming power. Number four, immerse yourself in intimate worship of God. And that's where I got the part, sing love songs to God rather than songs about him. Sing love songs to God rather than songs about him. Avoid false God of Christians, entertainment, where your flesh is stimulated rather than knitted to God. So in other words, watch what you see, watch what you hear, watch what you look at, watch where you go. Number five, find and dive into a life of a church that believes in the word and operates in the spirit. Because not all churches do that, right? If you really want to know the truth, Six, seek direct healing from the father and the impartation of the missing pieces of your childhood. God will surprise, under number six, it said, God will surprise you with badly need revelations while you are in the midst of seeking him. If you ask him for it, he will supernaturally impart vital things such as a sense of well-being, a knowledge of being loved, lovable, worthwhile, and valuable, a knowledge of goodness and righteousness of his having made male and female a certainty that you are wanted and that you have a father in heaven who adores you because half of us don't believe we do. Number seven, minister to others. Number eight, refuse to be discouraged by wilderness periods, your dry periods. Refuse, and that's all of them. Refuse to be discouraged when you're going through your wilderness period. So we're going to read a little bit out of this lesson. And I want you to think about what it says, and he speaks to me, because I'm going to ask you that question first, and you can be thinking about it. The question and he speaks to me says, what do you most desire to see change in your character, your demeanor, your self-control? How does Ephesians perspective bring it into reach for you? While we were up on that mountain, some of the stuff he spoke to us, how will it change your character? your demeanor, your self-control. Ephesians is full of how we are to live. It tells you about submission, 
to husbands and wives. It tells you about parents and children. It tells you about all the negative habits we have. It tells you about putting on the whole armor of God. Our character should be the fruit of the spirit and not all the obscene stuff that's in Ephesians that tells us that we shouldn't have. Can I pause you for one minute, Miss Joyce? Mm -hmm. For that he speaks to me. I want us to really take the time um, and, and write it down before we get into the lesson. And because Miss Joyce wants us to really think about it as we go through the lesson. So write it down. Take two minutes. Let's take two minutes. I wrote mine down. Um, and write it down. You don't have to type it in if you want to keep it personal for now. But write it down. We are in the awakening book right now. It's on page 357. And so I'll read that he speaks to me again. Again, it says, what do you most desire to see change in your character, demeanor, and self-control? How does an Ephesian perspective bring into reach for you? So all those different qualities that Ms. Joyce has just went over. What are some things that you want to personally see in your Christian walk that you want to see? So let's take the next two minutes mm -hmm. um, and write, write something down something down and then we'll get right back into the lesson mm -hmm. thank you amen <clears throat> Amen. Okay. We read the first scripture. That's where all the information that Christ was talking to us, the Lord was talking to us about. But the other three scriptures are, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, because we can do all things what we just talked about through Christ, which strengthens us. And that's Philippians 4, 13. The next scripture is for by you, I can run upon a troop, and by God, I can leap over walls. Psalms 1829. And our last scripture for this morning is, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. I'm going to repeat that again because we need that. My God will supply all. Put yourself there. Joyce's needs, Clarissa's needs, Miss Shalene's needs, Daphne needs, Miss Vicky's needs, everybody on here needs, according to his riches and glory. In Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4.19. Because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. All right, let's read. Reading the book of Ephesians is like climbing a mountain. One chapter, two chapters, three chapters, four chapters, five chapters, six chapters. Each one building on the other. Declaring in powerful prose the indescribable riches freely bestowed by our loving, gracious Father on all who believe in Christ. Then just when you think you've read of every major blessing that the Holy God could possibly give to undeserving sinners like us, you reach the breathtaking summit in the middle of the book. The reality of living on this earth in intimate relationship with him. 
who is able to do what? Far more abundantly beyond all we can ask or think. You ask him for something, he can do far more than you ask for. Because sometimes you don't know what you're asking for anyway. It might not be what he wants. He wants to give you something that's even better than what you're asking for. That's why he can do it. Continue into chapter four, you prepare for your descent from the doxology, except a word appears that unlocks the new vistas, which only those on the pentacle, that's up on that mountain, can see. It's a promise. There are higher heights to survey in him. Such is the abundance of inherent in the word, therefore. The back half of Ephesians is not a descent after all. It is actually an intense and beautiful description of all the treasures that came before. It reveals how, based on what our limitless God has done to redeem, equip, and drive, and draw us close to us. Let me repeat that, I'm going too fast what our limitless God has done to redeem, equip, and draw close to us, we are now empowered to walk in a manner worthy of the calling that we receive in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians 4.1. We can now legitimately be people who are patient and gentle, loving and accepting, utterly at peace, and content in life, Ephesians 4, 2 to 5. We can, Satan doesn't want me to turn the next page, what? We can serve others in a way that fulfills God's purpose and produce unity and spiritual fruit in the process. We can stifle our anger. No, we just talked about anger. Stifle our anger, be scrupulous, honest, extend true forgiveness, be the same pure, a bright person in private as we claim to be in public. You know how we do? People see us in public, that, oh, we got a good persona. We all miss it. We all, hallelujah, bless you, sister. Let me give you a hug. Let me pat you on your back. How you doing, sweetie? You get home, you turn into a monster. That's what it means. It says we can be the same pure, upright person in private as we claim to be in public. We can renew the love in our marriage refashioning our relationship into one that honors God in every way. We can parent our children with caring responsibility, perform all our work with diligence, sin, and integrity, and treat others with tender understanding from, the, from a heart of growing character from a heart of growing character. All of these things can be ours when we start putting the powers within us to work. Remember I said, God has given us the power. He has given us the power. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us use that power, but you got to access it. Much of what you may be asking God to change in you today, he has already begun to transform. You just need to walk in it. He's already transforming it. The key that unlocks these answers and outcomes is in him. And since he is already in you by his spirit, no longer do you need to treat symptoms, patch up problem areas, paper things over, and get along the best you know how. That's important. You don't need to do that. He's already working on it. 
You need only to start operating in the power he has granted you as a child. And then you are on your way to witnessing the steady growth of spiritual transformation. You've been struggling too hard to generate yourself. That's what the therefore is. For to show you the spirit infused potential you now have through Christ to become the person he created you to be, to prepare you to be stronger in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I think I had one more thing that he wanted me to say to you. And let me see if I can find it right quick. Five ways to measure your spiritual growth. That's what I'm going to say. How selfless are you? Think about that. How selfless are you? I didn't say self-full. Selfless are you? How much are you willing to sacrifice? Mm, that's two. You know, there's only five of them. How much are you willing to serve? How much are you willing to submit? And how much are you willing to suffer? That's how you can measure your spiritual growth by those five things. I'm turning it over to Clarissa now. Amen, 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 amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Miss Joy Shissa. Can you repeat the last one? The last one? How mm -hmm. much are you willing to suffer? S U F F E R. And if they need me to repeat them again, I will. Please. Okay. Number one, how selfless are you? Number two, how much are you willing to sacrifice? Number three, how much are you willing to serve? Number four, how much are you willing to submit? And number five, how much are you willing to suffer? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So the title of today is The Submit and Beyond. The Submit and Beyond. So before we got into the reading, we went ahead and we did the He Speaks to Me. So we'll go back to the He Speaks to Me. Um, and if you just joined, it's okay. It's... Then he speaks to me, reads, what do you most desire to see change in your character, demeanor, and self-control? How does an Ephesians perspective bring into reach for you? And Ms. Joyce went over all of the many Excuse different me, characters. Hannah? Yes, ma'am. It's the summit, not submit. The summit. summit. Excuse that me. means the mountain at the top. The mountain at the top. The summit. Yep. And beyond, the top, top of the mountain and beyond. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> and You're so, welcome. and so, what do you most desire? The mountain at the top. That's a different perspective. Okay, and so she went over at the top of the mountain. We're able to see so much more okay that helped me to understand more where you was going with that with that mountain at the <laughs> top um but she went over as paul was saying all the different characteristics inside of ephesians um as as we are to be as christians in intimacy with god and that it's this is and, it, and let me know put some ones in the comments if you can agree that this is a um it's a job. It's an ongoing thing that that we must do to, to work on our relationship with God. And sometimes um, we would have the impression that it's like, if just do it, you know? Like we would think like, 
there's something like that was one of the um, misconceptions that it's something that it should be easy you mm -hmm. know if you love God like this should be a simple um, just done it's in a bag type thing but no this is something that we have to work on day in and day out and so if you feel comfortable you can unmute yourself and you can share what is something that you want to work on um, Starting today, right? Not waiting until the New Year's, not waiting until the end. Because New Year's is coming. And many of us, like Miss Joyce said, we work on our body. We work on our finances. We work on our relationships. We work on so many things. But when we're making our goals, and not just New Year's goals, but when we're making our goals, most importantly, hopefully, we're also making spiritual goals. Because that's what's going to help us with all the other goals. And so what is something that we desire to see changes within our demeanor and self-control when it comes to our spiritual goals? And so if you feel comfortable, you can do the hand raise gesture. I'll go to Miss Michelle, my mama, um, to go first. Go ahead. Um, you want all of them or just one? <laughs> Well, give give me about two three minutes worth, so somebody else four, can get a chance too. Four. Give me two, whatever you can give us in about two three minutes. Uh oh, your phone broke up. Uh oh, try a different try a different room in the house, and then come back. Try a different room in the house and come back. I'll read the comment that's here. If somebody else want to share, you can share as well. Um, Ms. Pamela wrote, I'm working on my language. It's gotten better, but sometimes it slip out. I, I, Mama, you got to try a different room. Right, so Miss Pamela wrote, I'm working on my language. It's gotten better, um, but sometimes it, it gets the best of me. It's, it's kind of like that thing of what's inside of you comes out of you, and sometimes we can be doing good and then in a rage. It's like, uh-oh, you know, somebody cut you off in traffic, and it's like, uh-oh, so that's a great thing to work on. I'm sure many of us can relate to that. I saw um, Miss Chantel said her also that that's something she wants to work on. Um... Ms. Pamela also said, also the in, the envy spirit. I hate the feeling, but I don't like feeling grateful. The the um, God can't help us what we're not honest with. And so great job for being honest with it because that's when God can help us when we're honest with it and say, Lord, this is something that I need you to help me with. I notice that I have this spirit and I need you to, to help me with it. Why did I thought that was Ms. Pamela? I'm sorry. Uh, because okay, y'all both have a phone that says Moto something. Okay, and Miss Michelle. Okay, um, and then Miss Chantel said yes. Then if I'm or are you on here twice, Miss Michelle? Okay, so okay, and then yes. Then if I'm around a friend that use language, right? Sometimes now I do notice that too, right? Depend on what crowd you are around, you tend to to go back to to older habits, and sometimes I know I'm really bad around that too. Sometimes if I get around certain certain sisters or so forth, that's when I tend. And and I notice that I do that. I'm like, Rissa, cut that out. You need to cut that out and and get better at that. Um. So yeah, something we definitely can can work on. Yes, but we can't blame them. We gotta, we gotta fix it. You know, we gotta fix it ourselves. Yeah. Um, one thing that I that I wrote down that I want to work on for myself is I want to work on having longer periods of consistency of staying focused. Like I'll be focused and I'll be doing good, and then um, something can come and you can either get in the road the route of being busy. Or either I can get um, discouraged, maybe, and 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 then it's like can get shifted off. And so I want to focus on being strong for longer periods of the time. So if something comes up, it's like uh 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 uh, uh I'm staying with my eyes focused for longer periods of of time. That's what I want to work on self control, um, and 
iPhone said, self-control to handle situations the way God would do it. Amen. Amen. Um, Ms. Chantel said, also work on not accepting abuse from men just to have a man. Amen. That's a very powerful one. That's a very powerful one. Amen. 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 Are you in a better spot now, Ma? Let's see. Yes. Let's see. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the one you read with self control was me, but I'll do another. Oh, okay. Um, um, I was gonna say before my character. Um, when I go out around people, I want them to see the light shine in me. God's light shine on me. So I need to work more on my character as far as the light shining. So people see that I've been with God or that I'm with God. Amen. That's powerful. That's powerful. Amen. I like that. I like that a lot. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. That's 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 deep to be God's beacon of light. And then when you go around people, they they notice she spent time with God. You know, I can reach out to her. I can count on her. I can trust him. You know, that 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 is a per not a perfect person, right? I don't have to be a perfect person. I don't have to be an all together person, you know, but that is a person that has the love of God in them. Because sometimes people get it mixed up, right? And and they could think, you know, to be a Christian you have to be perfect and, and everything. And that's not the same. But to know that they have the love of God. They speak to God. You know? Amen. Amen. So let me take it a step further than he speaks to me. Would anybody like to share what are we going to do? Because it's one thing to know what I want to do to work on it. What you is one thing to know what you want to work on. It's another thing to say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z to work on it. Do any of us say, okay, I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm not sure if Ms. Joyce had tips or anything already to to help to help us with. Okay, so let me let me turn it back over. Amen. <laughs> One thing we can do is get into the word, but I want to tell you to go to Galatians, the fruit of the spirit. You know, that's what we need to be. The fruit of the spirit. Go to Galatians and let me see where it is. Let me see if it'll come up for me. The devil is a liar. Amen. The, well, we know that Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 to 23. That's our character. That's our character. The fruit of the spirit, love. So if we want to be more lovable. We need to look up scriptures on love. Would and you just like start to those Galatians 5 22 to 23. Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 to 23. Okay, I'll read it. Any but, version of the Bible you want. Okay, but the first, the first fruit of the spirit is love. So if you want to be more lovable, go into the Bible and pick up all look or on a concordance or on your computer and look up scriptures on love and start standing on them daily. If you want to have more peace, which is the next fruit of the spirit, stand on scriptures that's peace. Look up scriptures on peace. Speak the word and speak peace. Say, I am peaceful. Walk through the house, say, I am. God has given me peace. Jehovah Shalom, my God, he's peace. If you want kindness, that's your next fruit of the spirit. Stand on the scriptures for kindness. Generosity. Stand on the scriptures for that. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Stand on those scriptures for self-control, for gentleness, for patience, and watch the Lord change your demeanor because he works from the inside out. 
and you won't have to tell a person anything. They'll see something different. They'll see that your attitude has changed. They'll see that your demeanor has changed. They'll see a light about you. So we need to stand on those. Those are your characters. And if you got those four little letters, zip it and say, Lord, this is not of you. When something come your way, say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. This is not of you, oh God. You're not pleased with me with this. Just got to quote the word. That's our thing. Everything we need is in the Bible. There's a scripture for everything. Just whatever you need, look under the subheading in the back of your Bible or your concordance and it'll have scripture and see which one apply to you. There you go. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So that was Galatians 5, 22 and 23 that she read it off for you, the um, the fruits of the spirit. And so those different things, basically everything that we all said that we want to work on, it came from one of those, the self-control, um, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the goodness, the gentleness, all those different things came from there. And so amen, amen, amen. So going into our word is how we fix and we work on those and those things and so find the scriptures to stand on so if anybody else have anything else that they want to share on today we can share it um the floor is still open if not we'll close out in prayer amen what was number four Number four of the of the different fruits of the spirit. If, is that what you're asking for? Of the different fruits of the spirit? Mm -mm. Of which one? The uh, it says five ways to measure. Oh, the, the, okay, I have it. I know what she wants. Do you mean the five way to measure your spiritual growth? Yes. Okay. Number four. Thank Number you. Number four is how much are you willing to submit? And I think that's where we need to go. How much are we willing to submit the old self to the God-like character? Because we are new creatures in Christ now. We got to tell that old man to die. Did that answer? Say it again. How much is one more time? How much are you willing to submit? And what else you said? Okay. How much are you willing to sit submit? Because we are new creatures in Christ. Once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. the old self had died with him. So we okay. need to tell that old man he got to submit. Because okay. you're becoming more Christ-like now, so you want the Christ character, which is the love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faithfulness. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. Our hearts and minds clear. Amen. Okay. Father God, we come right now just to say thank you. Because it was you that came down and ministered to all of us. And we thank you for stepping on our toes this morning because we all sometimes need a good whipping. And you did. You whipped us this morning. And I just thank you. Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine, Father God, if you weren't there. And I just thank you for giving me an opportunity, Lord, to get it right with you. And I'm still holding on to your hand. We are all still holding on to your hand, Lord. We submit to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to die for us. And Jesus, we thank you for going to the cross 
And Father, we died with you at that cross and we rose with you. So now as your sons and daughters, we are walking in victory, taking one step, one day at a time, letting the old man know that he's dying, 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 because we want to be like you. We want to be more Christ-like. We want to make a difference. And we just thank you. So Father, I come praying for my sisters right now. You know each one of them, and you know their needs, and you know their character, and you know what they need to work on. So we ask that your will be done in their lives. Satan, we serve notice on you right now. You have no authority over us. We send you back to the pits of hell where you came from. We declare and we decree that Jesus is Lord of our lives. The Holy Spirit reigns in God. And our Father loves us so much that he's sitting high and he's looking low. And you are already a defeated foe. So we're going into the enemy's camp right now and we're taking back our finances. We're taking back our children that are wayward. We're taking back our health. We're taking back everything that the enemy stole from us. We're taking back our joy, our peace, our self-control. We're taking everything back. And we're stumping on your head because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So you have no authority. We thank you and we praise you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus and the sweet Holy Spirit, amen. And we put a special covering over our brothers as well. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. I didn't mean to leave amen. them out. <laughs> amen. No. I'll unmute us all to say amen. 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 Love you all so much. Happy Thursday. We do have a workout on tonight. So see you all tonight for our workout. Um, and then again on tomorrow. Love you all. Have a great day. Love you all. Right. Good night. Well, good, good day. Night. <laughs> 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 <laughs>